Hey friends, welcome. Today we're not doing a craft. What I have in store for you is how in the world did I make this shiplap rainbow wall? It is something that I have been wanting to do for a very long time and I found some inspo pics on Pinterest and I just went with it. And it was a lot of bumps and roads, there was a lot of hiccups, but I am so excited that the finished product is here. There probably still needs to be a little bit of touch up work. I mean, an artist always sees the flaws and of course I see all the flaws in this wall. So I'm sure as the weeks go on in progressives, there might be a little bit more changes that you see on this wall, but for the most part, I am completely satisfied with this wall and I can't wait to show you how in the world I did this. It was four weeks of a project. It was a long time. You know, when you get frustrated with DIY projects or any project, it is okay to just take a step back and try and regroup and refresh and figure out your next game plan. And that's exactly what I did here. So let's get started. To start this project, I went and measured the wall that I'm installing the shiplap rainbow wall to. Um, it is 101 inches. So what I did was, is I took one board, measured that at 101 inches, cut that, and then using that one board as a guide for all the rest of my boards, I needed a total of 14 boards for this project. On the directions it says, if you want a little bit of glitter, do one bag for a gallon. If you want more glitter, do two. After I read the directions, I determined I had no idea what I was doing. So this is gonna be more of an experiment. Um, I just opened up every single color, dumped a quarter of a teaspoon in each individual paint sample, put the lid back on, shook it up. I had a whole lot of glitter left over, so I just did the same process, but making sure I shook really well because I didn't want the glitter to be clumpy or not spread out enough and then I started painting. Before you start painting, make sure you give it a good shake one last time. Um, I just poured the paint on the board and I used a foam brush and I painted the entire board, even the little lip, because that will be visible when you hang the shiplap on the wall. The lip does get covered up when you install the shiplap, but please, please, please don't forget to paint this little lip. It is important and you will thank me later, I promise. Pausing for a money saving hack here. I do not like to be wasteful. So what I'm doing here is I'm just taking my foam brush and I'm squeegeeing out the leftover paint that's sucked up in that brush and putting it back in the container for later use. Um, that precious paint cost me a lot of money. Break time over, back to painting and painting and painting and painting some more until you get all of your boards painted. It is a long process, especially when you're doing a rainbow. My bonus mom did come in for a little bit, checked out how it was going, and she absolutely loves the amount of glitter I showed. I am almost done painting. I have four more colors left to do, but I've, I have ran out of table space. I wanted to show you the difference between the wet paint and then almost dry paint. So on the directions, it does say that the glitter shows up when it's almost dry or dry versus when it is wet, and that is the truth. So right now you can hardly tell this light blue has any glitter to it, but as you go to the drier colors, it starts picking it up. I only used one bag for all of my paint samples that I used. I do have a second bag, and I do if there isn't enough glitter on this, then I, what I'm going to do is to do a clear glaze, mix the glitter into that, and do like a clear coat over the top of this to add more glitter. But I don't know if I'm going to need it because I'm loving the effect that it's giving off right now. I finished painting, now up to the office. It is a little dirty, no judging. So what I'm doing here is I'm lining up the board to the very left to, so it's flush with the corner. And I'm going over to the very right, taking the back of my pen, to the board and I'm scoring a line because they are just a little bit too long for my wall. Instead of taking multiple trips back and forth to the office, I decided I was just gonna bring the saw upstairs. All I'm doing with the saw is I'm taking off the very edge of whatever is a bit overhang for it. I think it ended up being a quarter of an inch for me. This is the hardest part of the entire project, getting that very first board level on your wall. It would probably help if you had an extra set of hands. I did not, so this is me on the struggle bus. 
Uh, what I did here is I just took a really long level. I'm going to put a nail in the middle of the board and then go to each side and with the level, make sure that the board is straight. Now that you have the very first board up there secured and level, you never have to use the level again. So just keep doing the same process that you did the very first time making sure that it is straight on one side and completely flush with the wall and then going over to the right marking the back of your board if you have to trim anything like i did taking that to the saw trimming off the excess and then putting it back up on the wall making sure that the grooves are really close and tight together and then you just put some nails in the wall that's it Watch out. I don't know what I'm doing with this thing. You're going to take my head off. <laughs> it's just like a hair off of each one. So. It's alright though. It's better to have to take a hair off than... Just to let you know, I did have a nightmare that I cut all of the 14 boards on the wrong side. <laughs> yeah, I mean that would have been... Terrible. Our conversation that we had because of it was really fun in, our, in my head. Uh, <laughs> in my dream. <laughs> what? When I had to tell you we had to make the trip to Home Depot again to get 14 more boards. And you said, why? And I said, because I cut them all an inch too small. Instead of 101 inches, I cut them one inch. You weren't happy with me. No, I wasn't happy. <laughs> I was like, make sure you cut them long. Yeah. yeah. You can't uncut that. <laughs> <laughs> you weren't happy with me. So. I would have been all right. In my dream, it wasn't like that. But the good thing is, is in real life, it's good. You're gonna get almost every single board up. I should. Just uh, uh, when you get to here. I, I'm gonna stop. stop I'm gonna stop at that list. Okay. Uh huh. Because that's something I think you do together. Yeah. Now that the hubs has given his seal of approval, let's get back to business. Cutting and affixing, cutting and affixing. Keep going until you run out of planks or wall space. Well, the problem is here. since I started working on this wall. I did run into a hiccup and then I got frustrated. So then I had to take a pause for a couple weeks because DIYs are definitely not always perfect at all whatsoever. They take a lot of patience. Nothing ever goes the way that it plans. So here's a little story time. Um, when I originally sized this wall, I wanted a 12 foot boards because this is a 10 foot long wall and I did not want to buy an eight foot board and have random seams. So I wanted it at the 12 foot. Lowe's sells them and Lowe's sells them at six inches wide. So these things right here would have been six inches wide. The problem is, is when I went to Lowe's to go buy the shiplap, they were sold out of the 12 foot, six inch wide boards. So then I went to Home Depot. Um, didn't think anything of it, bought them, got, you know, you, as you saw, got pretty far. And then I realized, holy cow, <laughs> I still have this because Home Depot's wood for shiplap is four and a half inches wide, not six inches. So of course that means you're going to be off down somewhere because you didn't buy enough. So lesson learned, always, always, always measure a million times. <laughs> you can never measure enough. Um, had I bought in the wood from Lowe's, I would definitely have more. I even double checked after I found out that I had messed up. I was like, there's no way. Yeah. I did that. Um, so obviously you can tell that I finished taking up all the color pieces of wood and originally I had switched these two greens around 
um, and I did not like that, so I did switch them back because I want to go from dark to light. This teal right here, I know that I've shown you on Instagram what this looks like, and everyone's saying that I should move this somewhere else, but this is more of like a greenish blue color, which I feel like is going into the blues. So I'm going to leave the teal, I'm going to leave the teal turquoise there. Um, but today, all I'm doing is, is I'm going to finish touching up the paint on these four colors right here. And originally, at the very beginning of this video, I said that I was experimenting with the glitter because I didn't want to be too much glitter, but now there's not enough. Um, it shines just a little bit, but not as much as what I want it to be. So I am going to hack this into something amazing. Um, and then later on, I am going to go back and get the shiplap, and I am going to finish the wall, and I have an idea, and I'm hoping that it all works out. All right, let's get back to business. Okay, let's chat and discuss how I'm about ready to add more glitter to that wall. Um, I have looked high and low for different tutorials or something that would help, and I couldn't find anything. But I was playing with Maj Podge last week and it went on it went on cloudy, dried clear, and glossy. And then it got me thinking, what if I added this or added the sparkles, my leftover sparkles, into some Maj Podge, shake it up really well, and then throw it on that wall? What will happen? And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea, but let's find out. I think it'll work. I really do think it'll work, but you know, you never know when it comes to DIY. But I really, really want it to work. This paint right here has dried almost like a matte sheen with like no gloss to it at all. And you know, it's just not speaking to me. So we're going to take a little bit of Maj Podge, Maj Podge, dump the rest of this glitter on, shake it up, and slap it on there. Let's see if this works because I'm so excited. I am having massive camera issues, or maybe it's the cam the memory card. I am not sure, but OMG technology. Okay. So what I did was, and I've never done this before. There's no tutorial. So hopefully this works. But what I did was, is I just took the rest of my glitter that I had originally and I dumped it in the Mod Podge and I had shaken it. I dumped it in there, put the lid on, shook it up really well. I didn't think that it had enough glitter in it. So I opened up my second bag, my second one right here and did it again, shook it um, it seems really good, but I don't know if you can see it, but it's kind of like this grayish tint. It's really cute. It's glittery. I'm sure it'll dry clear. I'm sure. <laughs> I'm Brian. But just what you want to do is dump it in there and make sure you shake it really well because you don't want any clumps in your glitter because then you're going to have a clumpy Mod Podge mess. Uh, make sure that it's closed all the way. Otherwise that you'll get it everywhere. But it's on my hands right now and like Oh my goodness, it looks so good, so good. All right, and you can tell there is some glitter in that Mod Podge. All right, now I'm going to start painting this on the wall. <laughs> Prayers. Okie dokie. That little bit, that, this brush does not fit in my Mod Podge. Mod Posh container. So I need to find something. I need to find something that will work. Okay, this will work. This is just a container <laughs> that I found laying around my office. I'm gonna dump this into this. start painting. Okay, friends, let's finally finish this wall. I have had it. Enough is enough. We need to hurry up and finish this wall. Um, I have finally put up the last little bits of the boards right here, and I am going to make a cloud. So I'm going to do a cloud down here and then up here I'm also going to do a cloud so can't have a rainbow without any clouds so that's what we're going to do. First and foremost though, 
There is a little bit of, might be hard to tell, but there's where the Mod Podge and glitter uh, was when I brushed it on, it kind of got a little clumpy in areas. And you can't tell from far away, but definitely when you're up close, like you can see, there's just like a little bit of clumping. All I'm doing is I'm gonna take a little sanding block and I'm gonna sand it down and knock off some of that glitter so it's not so clumpy. Okay, so now what I'm doing is I'm going to take the blue, that is this blue right here, and a little bit of white paint. The Hubs is using an old Clorox wipe thing. Um, there's some white paint here. And I am going to mix the two to make a really, really, really light blue. I'm gonna put it in one of these little containers. Give it a little swirl. I think it needs to be a little bit lighter. It's still pretty blue. Put a little bit more paint because I need to make sure that I don't run out because to remix this, it's gonna be rough. All right, let's see what we got. It's pretty light. Maybe a little bit more white. It is pretty light. It is pretty light already, but I wanted to make sure and it not be as close to that blue right there. Perfect. Look at that, super blue. All right, now what I am going to do is, is I'm going to take a little paper towel and kind of blot the, because no cloud is just a straight line of not, um, you know, you have to give it some dimension. So I'm just gonna take a paper towel and like lightly dip my, um, my paper towel into it and just kind of blot on the um, white portions that are right here. I am going to like kind of blend it in so it is going to be on the pink and then up top on the um, on the red, I am going to just put a little bit on there so it'll all blend together. Well, outside of finishing touch-up work, this wall, it's complete. Um, I do have to put face plates on my, um, on my outlets and then a little bit of trim down at the bottom, but I would say that it's complete. Now, the large acrylic sign that I'm gonna do is gonna fill up this entire area. It's, I'm gonna really fill it in. I'm so excited about that. That's gonna be another tutorial next, um, but otherwise that, I love this wall. It makes me so happy.